Greetings to you, our respected viewers. You are watching another episode from the series The Laws of Health. Today we are talking about our amazing heart and its illnesses. Every time heart makes a beat, it sends a pulse of blood pressure down through the arm. The force of this pulse makes a systolic blood pressure, and it is the upper number when measuring blood pressure. After every heartbeat, the heart rests for a fraction of a second. The pressure in blood vessels lowers during this phase of rest and is called diastolic blood pressure. We are going to analyze the causes of elevated blood pressure. Arteries are muscular organs that can contract and expand. Overcontraction or stiffness of arteries' walls can increase blood pressure. Hormones can also elevate blood pressure. Some organs, such as kidneys or adrenal glands, are especially important for hormonal regulation of our blood pressure. However, the main cause of high blood pressure is our way of life. Most people have certain tendency towards high blood pressure. Whether it will be developed and how fast depends on their daily decisions. Of course, there are those unusual people who seem to be genetically immune to hypertension. Perhaps you know someone who does everything wrong, but still has normal blood pressure. Even if that person is your close relative, don't assume the same works for you. It seems there are several genetic factors that have direct or indirect influence on blood pressure. It is not likely that your genetic composition is identical to any of your relatives in all those aspects. Blood pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury. The world of medicine nowadays classifies the readings of blood pressure in several risk levels. Optimal blood pressure is below 120 80. Blood pressure up to the limit of 139-89 increases the risk of morbidity. Blood pressure elevated above 140-90 drastically increases the risk of getting sick. Notice that the safest range of blood pressure is characterized by an average systolic blood pressure of 120 mm of mercury or less and by average diastolic blood pressure of 80 mm or less while at rest. Every person should strive to have their blood pressure trust in this 120-80 mm or less range. High pressure brings increased risk of morbidity and premature death. However, very careful surveys show that decreasing diastolic blood pressure below 80 further lowers the risk of heart attack and stroke. Control of your blood pressure starts with knowing how high your blood pressure is. Don't assume that just because you feel fine, you have no problem with blood pressure. High blood pressure is called a silent killer for a reason. It is called so because severe disability and death are often first symptoms of hypertension. Most people will never realize their blood pressure is elevated unless it is checked by a doctor, they go for a medical examination, or they require an instrument for measuring blood pressure and they check it themselves. In fact, usually people feel just fine with blood pressure of 200, 100 or even higher. Indeed, you can feel great though you are teetering on the brink of ruin in the form of sudden stroke or heart attack or gradual damaging of your kidneys. Even 35% of people with high blood pressure are still unaware that they have a problem. Even among those who know they have a problem with blood pressure and are using medications, it seems only half of them really keep their pressure under control. Even though you have measured your blood pressure recently, you don't have high blood pressure at the moment, do not assume you will never have it. As a person gets older, blood pressure tends to increase. The most important complications of hypertension are stroke, heart insufficiency, heart attack, atherosclerosis, aneurysm, kidney disease, retinal disease, bursting of blood vessels, 
impaired memory and mental abilities. Stroke, the first disease, is caused by hypertension by at least two distinct mechanisms. First, high blood pressure makes a person more susceptible to atherosclerosis, often called a hardening of arteries. In that process, large and medium arteries throughout the body are narrowing by the accumulation of fats. Atherosclerosis usually affects blood vessels in the head and neck, which transport blood to the brain. Evidence says elevated blood pressure can damage cells that cover those blood vessels. This damaging seems to be one of the ways the process of atherosclerosis begins or continues. The body does not sit idle while fat is accumulating on the blood vessels. It responds by covering fat layers with a firm fibrous cap. If fatty material comes in direct contact with blood, it can stimulate the coagulation of blood. The fibrous cap prevents such an occurrence. That dual occurrence in fat gives the name to atherosclerosis. Athero corresponds to squashy mass of fatty material, while sclerosis, which means heart, corresponds to this material's fibrous cover, which is produced by the body. Unfortunately, the areas of atherosclerosis, called plaques, can be nibbled away. When that happens, the fibrous cap is being lost or damaged. The combination of fibrous and fatty material is then released into the bloodstream. Now a smaller, eroded fatty layer remains on the arterial wall, and that is called ulcerous plaque. If the plaque in blood vessel that supplies the brain dislodges, the result can be a mini-stroke or temporary ischemia. These conditions are similar to a stroke, but they are completely transient. Full recovery occurs within few minutes or hours. Even worse, ulcerous plaques may activate platelets, blood cells that cause blood clotting. This often starts a series of events that can completely block any artery which is already narrowed by atherosclerosis. If a full blockade appears in the artery that brings blood to the brain, brain tissue that dependent on that artery will die. This death of brain tissue is called a stroke. The other way for elevated blood pressure to cause a stroke is by significant damaging of brain blood vessels. According to this scenario, cumulative damage to the arteries is so huge, it makes the vessels burst and bleed. These so-called hemorrhagic strokes are particularly dangerous. Bleeding lasts a certain time. Since the brain is closed in a solid shell we call skull, it has no room where to move when the accumulation of blood starts competing with it for space. The more blood is accumulated, the bigger is the pressure inside the brain. If the bleeding doesn't stop, part of the brain can be literally squeezed into the small opening of the spinal cord. This is called a brain hernia, and it mostly causes quick death. Research has shown that the risk of developing atherosclerosis, mainly heart and cerebrovascular ischemia, is five times bigger with those with blood pressure 160-95, comparing with those with normal blood pressure. You can see the impact of blood pressure and the increased risk of heart attack and stroke on the screen. The risk starts to grow at the level of 120 to 129, though this range is called normal. The risk grows steeper at high pressure levels. The risk from heart attack and stroke increases four times with patients with 140 mm of systolic pressure. Therefore, in order to lower the risk, blood pressure should be kept below 120 mm for systolic pressure. In other words, don't be complacent when someone tells you your blood pressure is normal. Make an effort to manage it down to the level of 120 mm. These stricter guidelines mean that many people will have to get more serious about their lifestyle. Almost half of our male population has systolic pressure of 130 mm or higher. Losing weight has an important role in treating hypertension. For overweight people, the beginning of the weight loss program can significantly contribute to lowering blood pressure. Patients with hypertension don't have to acquire optimum weight to achieve lower blood pressure. Just losing 2.5 kilograms of weight in the first few days of a change in your diet will significantly lower blood pressure in many cases. However, in order to keep the weight off, 
one has to stick to the weight loss program until ideal weight is achieved. A simple four-step plan is prescribed to most overweight patients in order for them to acquire their desired weight. Step 1. Apply diet therapy under medical supervision. Step 2. Have strong breakfast and moderate lunch. Eliminate evening meal. If a patient has to eat something, fresh fruit is all that is allowed. Step 3. Remove or at least mostly reduce sugar and free fats in your diet using at the same time fiber-rich foods. Step 4. Moderately exercise approximately 45 minutes a day. The diet therapy used by experienced doctors has proved to be a perfect therapy for weight regulation. All patients who stick to this simple program accomplish a long-term weight reduction. Research shows caffeine affects blood pressure. One cup of coffee per day, or equivalent amount of cola-type beverage, can elevate diastolic and systolic blood pressure 5 to 6 points. Therefore, cutting out caffeine drinks has a potential of lowering blood pressure in the same measure. Caffeine doesn't just increase blood pressure trust. It can also, if it is used before or during exercise, significantly increase blood pressure and heart rhythm well above the values normally seen during exercise. It can turn an otherwise healthy activity into unhealthy one, increasing the risk of a substantial cardiovascular attack during exercise. Many people aren't aware that alcohol increases blood pressure. Just 30 to 60 grams per day is enough to cause significant hypertension. It is one of the reasons why some moderate alcohol consumers have a substantially increased risk of stroke. Smoking is one more lifestyle factor that increases blood pressure. After smoking just one cigarette, both systolic and diastolic blood pressure can remain elevated up to 30 minutes. As a matter of fact, Blood pressure can increase 10 millimeters of mercury. Though it seems a single cigarette doesn't cause a permanent increase of blood pressure, many smokers take enough cigarettes in a day to keep their blood pressure continually elevated. Dr. Norman Kaplan, one of the most prominent world authorities on high blood pressure, points out that typical smoker who consumes a pack of cigarettes per day has his blood pressure elevated most of the day. It is established that the usual breakfast food, oatmeal, lowers blood pressure. In one research study, 850 people were categorized based on the amount of oatmeal they ate. People who had one bowl per day had lower blood pressure and cholesterol levels. The effect was detached from other factors such as age, weight, or sodium, potassium, and alcohol intake. The conclusion is that people who try to control their blood pressure in a natural way can achieve unexpected benefits by having a bowl of oatmeal every day. In that way, oatmeal brings a double benefit for the heart. Most of us already knew oatmeal helps in reducing blood cholesterol levels because it is rich in water-soluble fibers. The information about blood pressure gives additional support in favor of using this multiply useful cereal. Physical exercise that activates the heart and lungs significantly lowers blood pressure in patients with hypertension. In one research study, 18 people who had been sedentary and had high blood pressure finished a 16-week exercise program. During the program they were riding indoor bicycles three times a week for 45 minutes per session. They exercised in moderate intensity, 60 to 80 percent of their anticipated maximum heart rhythm. After the four-month program, average systolic blood pressure was 7 millimeters lower and average diastolic pressure 5 millimeters. The exercise program also helped to prevent the blood pressure to increase too much during exercise. Their average systolic blood pressure during exercise was 19 millimeters lower and diastolic 10 millimeters lower than before introducing exercise program. 
In this episode, we've been talking about hypertension and considered few key facts. Some of the most important ones were Elevated blood pressure is dangerous for your health. It represents the cause of many disabilities and fatal diseases. Optimal blood pressure shouldn't surpass 120, 80 at rest. Most people with high blood pressure can keep it under control in a natural way, it is by changing their lifestyle. Introducing changes to your lifestyle is the best and safest approach to lowering blood pressure, as opposed to taking medications. If you want to use changes in your lifestyle to lower your blood pressure, you need to make following changes. 1. Eat plenty of fruit, vegetables, cereals and unsalted nuts in moderate amounts or other foods with low sodium. Two. Avoid foods such as pickles, canned ham, beef broth and other foods rich with sodium. 3. Avoid foods which have little or no fiber as meat and dairy products. 4. Remove coffee, cola type beverages and alcohol from your diet. Quit smoking. 6. Don't use a salt shaker. 7. Reduce your weight to the recommended level for your height and physique. 8. Adopt an exercise routine such as vigorous walking. 9. Learn to deal better with stress. With mentioned changes in your lifestyle, you have a good chance to lower your blood pressure to an optimal level and its maintaining without requiring medication. Take some time so you will be sure your blood pressure is in the ideal range. If it is not, don't delay these simple changes in your lifestyle. No one likes to change their way of life, but everybody can develop new interests for a new way of life. Furthermore, the changes in lifestyle we mentioned are small compared to the changes in lifestyle you may have to undergo as a victim of a stroke or heart attack. It is much harder to adapt to the diet of renal insufficiency patients than to a purely plant diet. It has less variety than plant diet and it is far less satisfactory. You can be one of the lucky ones that took the wake-up call on time before it's too late for a change. But perhaps you might not be that lucky. Our hospitals are full of people with permanent disabilities who simply had mildly elevated blood pressure. Turn the course of the sickness around with simple changes in your diet and lifestyle. Thank you for your attention.